I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Lincoln Corsair. Reserve without launch control. That's not bad. It's okay. I feel like it's faster when you're not trying to launch it. For sure it is. Horsepower and torque. 295 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque from a 2.3 liter turbo four-cylinder. So where does the Corsair fall in the Lincoln lineup? Because we've got the Navigator, the Aviator, which is smaller than the Navigator, but still a three-row, then the Nautilus. Yes, and this is the baby now. This is the Corsair. This is the smallest one. This kind of looks like it could just be a lifted hatchback. Kind of, yeah. It's actually based on the same platform as the Ford Escape. Should we get into the looks? Yes, I'm just gonna take myself out of excite mode first. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Do you like the front end? I really like the front end. I like where Lincoln is going. I guess let's just compare this to the Aviator looks. Okay, I like everything about the Aviator more. But that's because it's like a little bit longer, a little bit more suv -ier. Yeah, I just think it looks classier. But this does look nice and small, and it's still an SUV. Yeah, I really like the front grille. It's pretty big, but it's not overly big. And then we still have that chrome kind of area at the bottom where it's really reflective and kind of looks like headlights. And how about the headlights? The headlights are pretty classy. They are, but they're not like good enough, I think. Yeah, but they still have the cool thing where if you walk up to them at night, they come on very classily. Kay. Also, that's a word now. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Side view. This does kind of slope down just like the Aviator did, but just not as much. Yeah, and if I read through the press materials, which I didn't, they would probably say that this looks like an airplane wing or something oh, again. Oh, yeah, so it's right down. Exactly. Yeah, airplane stuff. <laughs> and just like on the Aviator, I really like all the wheels that Lincoln is putting on all their SUVs. They're directional. I like that. Yeah, it does look good, but what is the Continental recommended tire for the Corsair? The Cross Contact LX25. Do you like the Corsair badge? I really like the Corsair badge. That's a cool spot for it, and I think it works across the lineup. Yeah, I know you love that in the Aviator. Yeah. How about all the chrome we have on here? It also works for this car. This is one of those cars that chrome just works. I think chrome works on anything that's airplane themed. You know, <laughs> yeah, they just have okay. like old chrome airplanes and stuff like that. But it also works on like an S-Class and stuff like that too. Yeah, in small pieces. But you know what? It wouldn't really work on a 7 Series. I just thought of that right now. And then we've also got a really nice body line that goes across the whole car at the top. I think it's very nice. It's pretty consistent with the rest of the SUVs, except the Nautilus, because that one's just been mildly refreshed. That thing needs an overhaul to be able to match the rest of the Lincoln lineup. Yes, because this has a completely different interior and infotainment and everything, which we'll talk about later. Yes. How about the taillights? Taillights are really cool. They do kind of look like wings. Kind of, yeah. And I really like how they look when they light up. Then we also have a spoiler that comes all the way over, which does look good too. And then we've got real exhaust tips. Shout out, Lincoln. I thought we were gonna get the ones that spit down to the ground and then fake come out the back. I thought that too, but we didn't. Maybe they just didn't refresh that part. Keep this across your lineup, please, Lincoln. Yes, great job. So overall looks of the Corsair. Like it, don't love it. I think it's a very good looking small Lincoln SUV. Yeah, I just think the Aviator looks that much better. So with the exterior of the way, let me just floor it while we're already moving. And then it really picks up. There's a lot of lag on downshift. What drive mode were you in? Normal. Okay. Let me go back to Excite because we got some wild names for these drive modes. And wild graphics. Okay, so now I'm in Excite. I'm excited. Floor it. Definitely faster. Just a little though. Yeah, but you do notice it. So let's talk about these drive modes. We have Excite, we have Conserve, we have Normal, and then Slippery and Deep Conditions. The best part about the drive modes are the graphics in the gauge cluster. Yeah, except they're a little bit laggy to come up, but once they're up, they're really smooth. Yo, I don't think any car company is gonna not have lag. I feel like they just can't figure it out. They're like, what do we do? Add more RAM or memory? Nah, just use old stuff. I feel like BMW doesn't really have much lag. I guess not, but they don't also try to push it with hard graphics. You know True, what I mean? yeah. So let's go back into Excite and send it into a cliche corner and see how this thing handles. Okay, pretty good initial turn and response. This is actually not bad. This is way better than I expected it to it's, be. It's a lot snappier than you'd think. Yeah, like it's not squealing tires. Like I'm not at the limit, but I feel like this is really good for this class of SUV. I don't think it's as good as the RDX. I think that thing I would handle almost anything in that class, but this is pretty good. But this is like almost more car than SUV when it comes to handling. Yeah, and Lincoln's already going for more luxury than sporty. They've already admitted that. This thing will not be on the Nürburgring probably ever. <laughs> so I get what they're doing with this. This is very comfortable. The suspension is super nice over potholes, over bumps, whatever, no issues. And we do have the optional adaptive suspension, but I haven't really noticed that much of a difference between the drive modes. 
So we do have an eight speed automatic. It is pretty smooth. We do have paddles for some reason. I would advise not using them, even though they shift relatively quickly in Excite. Yeah, it's just not one of the cars you need paddles no, for. No, this is, this is a paddle delete car. Did the Aviator delete paddles? I think it did. Don't Maybe. really remember. I don't remember. Watch that video. Let us know. But this transmission is way better than the one that was in the Edge ST, which I totally hated. And it is all-wheel drive. It doesn't understeer as much as I expect it to do. So it's going to be pretty good in the winter and maybe even fun. Maybe. Or borderline. Maybe. Yeah. And this also has adaptive cruise and lane keep assist. And lane keep assist is lane centering. And it's actually pretty good. Yeah, like the good one that Lincoln always has. Yeah, so great job on that as well. We've got some buttons that change on the steering wheel. But let's get into the interior when you drive. Sounds good. Now, rolling launch. Feels a little better. It picks up at the end there. It's like the boost is in the higher RPMs. Okay, so let's talk about these seats because we have the perfect adjustment seats or whatever they're called. Perfect position, apparently. Okay, got in here. It was a pain to adjust, but I knew what to do because I've been in so many of them. If you don't know what to do, it's going to be a hassle. But once you're in it, it's pretty comfortable. And I find these to be not the most comfortable, as we've said in every car with these perfect position seats, but other people find them comfortable. So if you're gonna buy this car, just sit in one at a dealership and just play with it. And then we also have more adjustments by clicking the button and massage in the screen. Yeah, and the massage is actually really good and it's nice to have massage in this class because many other SUVs don't have it. Then how about the back seat room? Back seat room is decent, especially because you can actually recline the back seats and slide them forward and back. How about the trunk space? Box test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And shout out to Matt Brand Cars, our newest box test member on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. This could be your name here. Oh no, this is so slow. It's a really slow trunk. So then if we look at the general interior here, like the materials, the colors and everything are really, really premium. Yeah, everything feels very premium. It looks very premium. There's nothing that looks cheap other than some stuff at the bottom, but it's at the bottom, so it's fine. And we have a bunch of piano black, but the way it looks, it all kind of works, but I know you don't want to touch any of it. Yeah, the worst part of the gloss black is that where all your climate controls are, your PRND, which is up there, which I believe they call piano keys or something. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little bit too much gloss black. Yeah, you get a lot of hand prints on there. So the steering wheel is really nice. And like you said, the buttons do change. It's pretty easy to use. I think it's a very good gimmick. Yeah, they made it more minimalistic for the things that you don't need at the time unless you're using them. And then we've got a nice head-up display which shows all our info. We've got a gauge cluster that's pretty minimalistic and easy to read. But it is really laggy. Yeah, car companies just can't figure that out. Can I get to my little lag rant? Are we talking about the infotainment? Yes. Hit me with it. Okay, it's not even, a, well, it's a bunch of things. So this has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so great job, I guess. But the problem is they both don't work very well at all. What part is the worst? The satellite radio when you're in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you adjust it with a hard button, which thank you for doing a hard button for the tuning knob, it will actually kick you in and out of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Just in and out, in and out, no matter what you do. But it like jumps through a couple screens and it just like sputters. Like It's so bad that it makes me think that the actual car that we're reviewing is broken. So I don't know if other cars do this, but it's so bad that I can't believe this passed out of the factory like in this. In Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yeah, because I kind of expect like weird stuff in Android Auto sometimes, <laughs> but Apple CarPlay does it too, so it's very weird. And on top of that, when you're in satellite radio without Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, yes, I will talk about satellite radio first, the rewinding and everything is just brutal. You, you can't adjust stations. It's so laggy. Like, you hit the tuning knob, you wait five minutes, and then it catches up. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to hear that you're disappointed about radio stations and tuning knobs. It, it makes my day. This isn't me. Like, it's so bad that it's bothering me, and normally I don't care about any of this stuff, and it's, it's just, it's that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Ah. So then we also have a reverse and 360 camera in the infotainment. It's not the highest resolution, but it is very clear. And back to more material stuff, we got pretty cool vents and we actually have a fake vent on the inside. Yeah. Fake vents are usually outside. But it makes sense because it goes with the whole design pattern. If that was like a real vent, like there'd be too much air coming yeah. out of one area. It doesn't bother me. I just wanted to point it out. And then we do have the Revel audio system, which is actually pretty good. However, if you crank the bass, listen to some rap music, it just shakes the whole car and you can hear rattling. So ah, that's not good. I know. And in our center console, we actually do have a wireless charger. So your phone's out of the way, which is pretty nice. Except for that we don't have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. So bit of a miss there. Okay. How about the visor test? Let's find out. Oh, three, two, one. 
full pass, like the most pass, because they actually printed the visor test instructions on the visor. Before it was just like a little card that you could see. Here it's for everyone to see forever. That's a, that's a slow clap. Then how about the cup test? Uh, let's find out. If it's a small cup, no problem. Perfect, we found out. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's pretty much everything with the Lincoln Corsair. Except the price. Hit me with it. $50,500 to start. Canadian. And this one is $66,075. Well, this is full on luxury. Yeah, and this is pretty much pretty close to fully loaded. Yeah, I mean, that's not that unrealistic of a price, especially considering how cool everything looks in here. I mean, like, yeah, the way the infotainment works maybe isn't really up to luxury standards and maybe the quality of the reverse camera isn't, but like a lot of the stuff is. Yeah, the looks, the interior itself, I really like this SUV. Who are the competitors for it? This would be like the Acura RDX, the BMW X3, the Mercedes GLC, the Volvo XC60, the Cadillac XT4. I think this would probably be one of the more simpler cars for people to get used to because with the BMW, that's a weird infotainment. The RDX has like a track pad. And I'm pretty sure the Mercedes is gonna have that as well. Yeah, and I think this thing handles pretty well. It's got a decent amount of power. The steering's super light. I think people will like this. Now, the only question is, are people gonna jump ship from foreign luxury cars to this luxury car. Well, this is more luxury than it is sport. So if you're looking for something more luxurious, then definitely look at this. But if you want something sporty, I'd say look elsewhere. So let us know where you would look if you were looking at a Corsair. And since we brought it up so many times, watch our Acura RDX review from a couple years back. Just click here and then I'll probably put a playlist too. Just, just click right here. <laughs> click. This is, this is it. <laughs>